Uh, greetings, everybody. Here's a quick intro. If you look in the description, I'm going to put a link to the Book of Enoch so that you can read it on your own when I'm reading it and uh, follow along. So look in the link. All right, let's continue. All right, let's take a look at the uh, this uh, where the Bible lines up with uh, Enoch. We're going to take a look at the parable here. In chapter 38, it says, and when the congregation of the righteous shall appear and sinners shall be judged for their sins and shall be driven from the face of the earth. And when the righteous one shall appear before the eyes of the righteous, whose elect works hang upon the Lord of spirits and light shall appear to the righteous and elect who dwell on the earth. Boy, there's a lot of... This is some really deep stuff here. I mean, it's, uh, I hope I can do it justice. I really do. All right. In, um, in the book of Jude, verse 14, And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. We'll probably look at this again to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him spoken against whom against the lord of the lord of hosts the lord All right, we're going to take a look at, uh, all right, and that was Jude chapter 1 uh, that I just read, starting in verse 14. Now we're going to take a look at, uh, Enoch talked about the appearing of the Lord. So let's take a look at a couple things. And, you know, you could always go and study these more in detail. 1 Timothy 6.14, that thou keep his commandment without spot, unrebukable until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13 Looking for that blessed hope, the blessed hope, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Of course, some people will tell you the blessed hope's the pre-trib rapture. Uh, you know, it, and the glorious appearing of the great God and of and uh, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, when Christ comes back, it's not going to be a secret. Everybody's going to see him. But you can't tell that to the Baptist church. They just, they, you know. 2 Timothy 1.10 But it is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And this is spiritual death, right? Uh, and that's only for people that have, you know, through the gospel. The good news. 2 Timothy 4.8, henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. 2 Timothy 4.1 I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Now, who's the quick? Well, if you're alive, even if you're a snail or a slug, you're quick compared to the dead that's in the grave that don't move, right? 1 Peter 1, 7, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, 
might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. All right, Enoch talked about uh, brightness, right? So 2 Timothy, or I'm sorry, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity, what's iniquity? Wickedness, sin. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. See, it was already working in Paul's time. And I just find it hard to believe that there are actually people that will tell you that Paul is a false apostle. I mean, they, they do. Um, like the Holy Spirit failed to warn the apostles in the book of Acts that Paul was a fake, right? And then to throw away, you got to throw away 2 Peter, you got to throw away the book of Acts, you got to throw away all of Paul's writings. I Really? You know, you know God blinds people. I, I just, I, I see that. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed. I think they're talking about the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast, the antichrist. They got different names. The beast in the book of Revelation. I think John calls him the son of perdition the man of sin, or maybe it's the Antichrist. I, have, I don't know. I don't remember. But those four names apply to the man of sin. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. What happens to darkness when there's a bright light? It disappears, right? Uh, yeah. So, the Lord's going to consume him with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. All right. Uh, it says, and when the righteous one shall appear before the eyes of the righteous, whose elect works hang upon the Lord of spirits. Hmm. See, our works and there's people that hate that word elect. You know, they they, they absolutely hate uh, the idea that God picks people, except, of course, if you're talking about the, the you-know-whos that deny Jesus. Well, they could be the elect, but, uh, you know, not, not people that believe in Jesus. Those that don't believe Jesus, they're, they want you to believe they're the elect. But, boy, there's... People fight just tooth and nail, believing God has a, an elect chosen people whose elect works hang upon the Lord of Spirits. See, our good works don't depend on us. Our good works depend on Him. And light shall appear to the righteous and the elect who dwell on the earth. Oh boy, that's there's a lot of stuff there. All right, so let's see. In Galatians 3, 6, it says, Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. See, believing, faith, is our righteousness. Uh, Abraham was considered righteous before God because he believed him. You know? Abraham was a long time before Jesus was ever born. Let me tell you something. Romans 10, 3, For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. And what is the righteousness of God? Believing in Christ. Um... Romans 9.30, what shall we say then? That the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. There you go. Hmm. 
But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. See, there's no righteousness in the law. I mean, if you have faith, you'll keep the law as best you can. You know, but faith, you know, righteousness is not in the law. Philippians 3.9. Here's that Paul that they tell you is a false apostle. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ. Through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Hmm. Yeah, there you go. I love this. Galatians 2.21 I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. What is vain? It means useless, worthless. Is Christ's death worthless? No, absolutely not. So, righteousness does not come by the law. And Paul knew this. How about 2 Peter 3.13? And we're going to need this. Uh, we're going to get to this anyway. So, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Why? Because all the wicked are going to be, uh, well, let's just say they're going to go to their appointed place. So, yeah. They're not going to be here. All right. And then it says, Where then will be the dwelling of the sinners? And where the resting place of those who have denied the Lord of Spirits? It had been good for them if they had not been born. Boy, I th there's... Uh, the more I read this, the more I have some newfound respect for this. So let's take a look. All right, in Matthew 18, um, verse 1, At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But, who, uh, but whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone, now millstones are generally 70 pounds, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. See, it would be better if you were drowned. You only die once. Uh, woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. All right, what about uh, Matthew 26, 24, speaking of Judas? The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe, woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Remember, Judas Iscariot betrayed Christ, right? It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Remember, Judas Iscariot is called the son of perdition. What does perdition mean? It means to fall. There's only two people in the Bible that are called the son of perdition. And one has reference to Judas, and the other has reference to the, uh, I think it's the false prophet. It's either the false prophet or the man of sin. I'd have to look it up, but it has reference to yeah, you you could you could look it up. You know, don't take my word for it. Let's see. 
Here's a good verse uh, about the um, dwelling place of the unrighteous. Matthew 25, 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels, holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. It's funny how Satanists use a goat as their symbol. Or is it? And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in, naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee, a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, In as much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. See, hell wasn't even, I, I, my opinion is, there wasn't even a hell until Satan and his angels fell. Uh, but that, that's just my opinion, you know. Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. See, the devil's got angels too. You got holy angels and unholy angels. For I was in hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in, naked, and ye clothed me not, sick and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, or thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal." You want to see a second witness from Jesus? Luke 16, verse 20. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. Uh, there's people who will tell you that this is a parable. Jesus doesn't say it's a parable. He actually called this guy by name. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Did the rich man uh, offer his hand to this beggar named Lazarus? No. No, when, when they drop something from the rich man's table, Lazarus probably had to pick it up off the dirty ground or the floor to eat. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass when the beggar died and was carried by the angels. Do you know that when the righteous die, they're carried by the angels? Did you know that? Yeah, right here. It's in the Bible. It's in black and white. And it came to pass when the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom, the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, and in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth 
Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. See, there was a uh, two compartments in hell. You had the smoking section and the non-smoking section. Yeah. Abraham was in the non-smoking section. The the yeah, it was uh probably air conditioned over there. But uh, yeah, the the sauna part was where the rich man went. All right, let's read Enoch. Where then will be the dwelling of the sinners? Well, I think we already know. It's in the smoking section where Abraham's bosom is, right? The flames. And where the resting place of those who have denied the Lord of spirits. It had been good for them if they had not been born. Isn't that what uh, Jesus said of Judas Iscariot? Oh, yeah. Let's see. When the secrets of the righteous shall be revealed and the sinners judged and the godless driven from the presence of the righteous and elect, from that time those that possess the earth shall no longer be powerful and exalted, and they shall not be able to behold the face of the holy. For the Lord of spirits has caused his light to appear on the face of the holy, righteous, and elect. Then shall the kings and the mighty perish and be given into the hands of the righteous and holy. And thenceforward none shall seek for themselves mercy from the Lord of spirits, for their life is at an end. People, the day of salvation is the day when you're alive. There is no salvation when you die. You are either in Christ or you're outside of God's grace. You're either in Christ or you're outside of Christ. Thirty-nine chapter, and it shall come to pass in those days that elect and holy children will descend from the high heaven, and their seed will become one with the children of men. And in those days, Enoch received books of zeal and wrath and books of disquiet and expulsion. Descending from heaven? Uh, where's that in the Bible? Well, that's in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Uh, that's Paul. You know, yeah, Paul's a false apostle. Uh, no, people that deny Paul are false. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 14, For if we believe, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep, you know, the dead. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a secret rapture that nobody ever heard about. Uh, no, eh, wrong. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a, a shout, with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. Yeah, a, a secret rapture always happens with a shout and trumpets blowing. Yeah, right. And with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. That's those that sleep, right? Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. See, we're, if, if, if we're not, this is, Pay attention, people. This is probably one of the most important things you could ever, ever learn that I could ever teach anybody for end-time events, for those that are in Christ, anyways. If we are not caught up in the air, it's the wrong Messiah. It's the wrong Christ. The man of sin comes first before Jesus does. You know, I've, I've been kicked out of every Baptist church I ever mentioned that to. 
I mean, seriously. How in the world can you read this and not understand that? We have to be caught up in the clouds, in the air, to meet the Lord in the air when he's returning. And if not, if there somebody comes and shows up and is performing miracles, and the whole world goes after him saying, Oh, the Messiah has come! Oy vey! Wrong one, people. Wrong one. All right, chapter 39. Um... Verse 3, And in those days a whirlwind carried me off from the earth and set me down at the end of the heavens. And there I saw another vision, the dwelling places of the holy and the resting places of the righteous. All right, let's go to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 12. Uh, Enoch went up to heaven. Uh, let's see, which one was it? Uh, it said at the end of the heavens. And Elijah was taken up into heaven too by a uh, chariot of fire. So let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Paul writing, It is not expedient for me doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ about, uh, I'm sorry, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. So there's a first heaven, a second heaven, and a third heaven. There might even be a fourth or a fifth, I, I don't know. I just know there's at least three, three heavens. So Paul was, well, let's keep reading. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth. How that he was caught up into paradise. Remember the thief on the cross asked Jesus, he says, Lord, when thou Comest into thy kingdom, remember me. You know, I'm paraphrasing. And he's, Jesus said, This day thou shalt be with me in paradise. Bingo. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such an one will I glory, yet of myself. I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, Christ speaking to Paul, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will, I will rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions. Paul takes pleasure in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Weak in the flesh, strong in the Lord. The Lord's strength. I am become a fool in glorying. Ye have compelled me, for I ought to have been commended of you, for nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. 
Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience and signs and wonders and mighty deeds. See, it was Paul that was caught up to the third heaven. But you don't catch that right away. So let's keep reading Enoch. All right, in chapter 39 and verse uh, 12, generation unto generation, those who sleep not bless thee, they stand before thy glory and bless, praise, and extol, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of spirits. He hath filled the earth with spirits. Where do we read this holy, holy, holy? Well, it is in Revelation, but in Isaiah 6, 3, And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Why holy, holy, holy? Father, Son, Holy Spirit, right? And people will say, Oh, I don't like that Trinity word. Well, the word Trinity is not in the Bible, but Godhead is. And Jesus Christ has to be God in the flesh. Otherwise, we better look for another Messiah. Because only God is righteous and holy and never sinned. Think about it. Think about it. So, uh, let's take a look. Is there another place? Oh, yeah, the book of Revelation, chapter 4 and verse 8. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come, which was the past and is their present time and is to come, future. You know, there's a lot of uh, trinities in the Bible. A lot. A lot. I mean, we're in three dimensions. Uh, length, width, and height. And there's actually, Paul says that there's a fourth dimension, which is probably the spiritual realm. So, and I did a Bible study on it, if anybody's interested, you know. But uh, there's three we're three-dimensional beings with a some kind of a spiritual aspect. So, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. But I don't like that Trinity stuff. Hey, man was made in God's image. Man has a body, a soul, and a spirit. And your soul is not your spirit. Your spirit and your soul are not your body. Three parts. One, one man. But if you listen to the Jehovah's Witnesses, you'll, oh, it's a three-headed God. Uh, I don't think so. You know, Satan corrupts everything. Everything. All right, let's go to chapter 40 and uh, verse 6. The elect one and the elect ones who hang upon the Lord of Spirits and the third voice I heard pray and intercede for those who dwell on the earth and supplicate in the name of the Lord of Spirits. And I heard the fourth voice fending off the Satans and forbidding them to come before the Lord of Spirits, forbidding them to come before the Lord of Spirits to accuse them who dwell on the earth. Do you know that uh, the Lord, you know, we get accused? Oh, yeah. Where is that in the Bible? Ah, I know where. Zechariah. I always get Zechariah and Zephaniah mixed up. Don't ask me why or how, but I just do. It's Z-E-C-H-A-R-I-A-H, chapter 3. Minor Prophets, those little tiny books before the New Testament. Verse 1. And he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Uh, what's a brand? It's a, 
you know, like a branding iron, right? Um, you know, what they used back in the cowboy days, they would stick a hot metal thing into a fire until it got red hot and then pull it out of the fire. And they also use that in fireplaces, a brand, to push the logs around, to help them burn better. Now, why would it say, the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuke thee? Uh, why would the Lord say, the Lord rebuke thee? I think it's the Lord Jesus Christ saying, the Lord God the Father rebuke thee. That's my guess. And if I'm wrong, may the Lord forgive me. But, I, you know, I just thought I would point that out. So, even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. Filthy garments. Uh, is that his flesh? The, the dirty flesh? The sinful flesh? And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. Ah. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity, his sin, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with a change of raiment. Very interesting. So where do we read about uh, new raiment? Oh, book of Revelation. 6.11, And white robes, white robes, were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until our fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Revelation 4, 4, And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the uh, seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Revelation 3, 5, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. Raiment's just a fancy old, test, uh, old English word for clothing. And I will not, not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. There you go. Uh, Revelation 6, 11. Oh, we read that. Okay. Revelation 7, 9. After this I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Revelation 7, 14. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest... See, he asked him, what are these that are with the white clothing, you know? He said, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. You want to wash your clothing in Tide? Or do you want to wash it white in the blood of the Lamb? I think I'm going to pass on... Uh, tied but what do you say what do you say now we're going to read about wisdom proverbs 1 and verse 20 it says wisdom crieth without she she uttereth her voice in the streets wisdom is considered a she proverbs 8 1 doth not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her, her voice. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, Proverbs 7, 4. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman. I guess I made, made my point there. So, uh... Chapter 42, Wisdom, Enoch, 42. Wisdom found no place where she might dwell. Then a dwelling place was assigned her in the heaven. 
Wisdom went forth to make her dwelling among the children of men and found no dwelling place. Wisdom returned to her place and took her seat among the angels. Uh, and unrighteousness went forth from her chambers, whom she sought not she found and dwelt with them and as rain in a desert and dew on a thirsty land. Now, I'm kind of thinking this is a figure of speech, you know, calling wisdom. Uh, if you listen to the you-know-whos, they'll tell you about the she-kina, S-H-E-K-I-N-A-H, the she-kina. And uh, it's witchcraft, people. That's nothing to do with the Bible. Nothing. And that's the uh, you know who's and their their wisdom, which, no thanks. All right, and then uh, let's see on uh, forty five. What is it? Forty five. Verse five. And I will transform the earth and make it a blessing, and I will cause mine elect ones to dwell up upon it but the sinners and evildoers shall not set foot thereon see there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth and they're not going to set foot on it they're not going to pollute it for i provided and satisfied with peace my righteous ones that have caused them to dwell before me but for the sinners there is judgment impending with me so that i shall destroy them from the face of the earth oh yeah Wait a minute, did I? Oh, I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself. Never mind. Totally disregard that. That's in the next um, the next one. Um, we're going to start the next one at chapter 45, which is uh, the second parable uh, concerning those who deny the name of the dwelling of the Holy Ones and the Lord of Spirits. So... Alrighty, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.